Hello and welcome to What's New in Inventor 2013. Today's segment is around parts. My name is Ken Phelps. I'm the tech support supervisor here at Master Graphics. One of the first things we have here are primitives. You can do box, cylinder, you know, shapes like that. I'll choose a face to put my new box on. Give it a size. We'll say it's going to be 10 by 6. Extrude that out and just drag my thickness. I'll make it about two. And I kind of step through the process one more time real quick. I'll put a cylinder here on the face of it. Choose my face to sketch on. Define its location. And give it a size. I'll say I'll make it three. And if I drag this out, it makes the boss on the outside. But if I pull it into the existing body, it'll make the cut for me as well. Something else that's new for the software too is the ability to window select the center points. So I'm going to create a sketch, put a bunch of points inside of here. And good enough. I'll finish my sketch. I choose the whole command. You know, it by default will grab all those center points automatically. But now I can window select to deselect or to add in more things into my selection set to place those holes also. That looks good. I'll click OK. Now a different way to modify and change some of the input is something that Autodesk is called direct manipulation. In this case, an example is with the shell command. I can grab the arrow for my thickness and just drag it back and forth to define what my shell thickness is going to be. It's a better visual feedback to what you're going to have before you choose accept. Same type of input for a plane. You know, some of the plane placements can be challenged in a place to get the right result that you're looking for. In this case, now I have the arrow just to drag it around and have the right display that I want to have for that placement. Some new changes for the end of part. I can right click on a feature and move my end of part marker right below that feature. I can right click on the end of part to force it to the top or to the end. Same thing, if it's already at the end, I can right click and say move it to the top. Some more visual feedback when making changes and edits to a, a part, just trying to add in new features to it. In this case, if I want to add in a fillet to this edge, if it gets to be too big for the current condition for it, I'll get a warning in the lo on, on my little marking menu here on the right. You click on it. It tells you some more information about the warning itself, so you get some visual feedback if that's going to work or fail before you ever go to and try to apply the feature. Also new is the option to show some of the parameters into your sketch easily. In this case, I have a few parameters in this file. I'll edit my sketch. Now I have some text being shown here. Now one of the first things to notice here is I just double click to edit the text. I'm not forced to go and right click and say edit text from here. In this case I can bring in one of those parameters I've developed and just place that inside of the sketch. So if I want to have that value to be shown, I can do that here. Probably the more commonly used place to put that is going to be in your 2D sheets. In this case there's some that are already set up. But just to kind of show you the routine, it's the same basic process I just went through on the model previously. I'm going to annotate. I'll drop in a new piece of text. You just change your source to user parameters. Pick the one that you want to add that into your text. When working with other file formats, you can export to the STL. You can also now export to the STL with the model colors. So if you're trying to use this on, say, a 3D print device, you can have access to have the colors being used in model being outputted to that. Just a checkbox in the lower right corner for the options to export the colors. Also new for 2013 is the ability to import an STL as well. In this case, I'll grab one of the existing STLs that I have just to open that up. The same basic model being pulled back in. Just speaking of the colors and whatnot, 
There's two pull downs at the top. The first pull down is for the material. The second pull down here is for the color being applied to the model. So if I change this from what it is now to a different material type, I'll just say it's titanium. If I go and double check the properties of the model, on the physical tab it does indeed change that to titanium. So even though my material is titanium, if I want to have the color be something different, I can still change the colors. If I grab, say, white here, yeah, that doesn't look so great in the background, so I'll change that, say, to turquoise. So you know, the material can be one thing, and your color can be another. Thanks for watching. To be notified when new videos are available, subscribe to our channel by clicking the subscribe button above. To see a list of all our videos or to get more information, click the link below to go to our website.